in my one more time. Oh, three times I've done that now, right on that corner. Hi everybody, welcome back to the workshop. Yes, it's a frosty and very, very cold day. So as you can see just behind me, we've got the front end of a Vauxhall Vivaro in the workshop. Don't know if you can hear it, but we've actually fitted a diesel heater in it. Let me show you. So the controller is just up there and the heater it's just down there. Another thing I had to do for this customer was put in this step for him. It's a bit dirty and messy because we're not tidy that up. So that's all in place for him. So yeah, we fitted in one of these. They're not brilliantly made because the plug socket for the wire for the actual brake light had to be scraped out a little bit so the plug could fit into it. So what we did, we undone it, fed the wire through. So I need to get the wire down through this channel beside the window, just down here, and it's fed out through here. Now getting that wire down through there has been a real challenge, but we've done it. Now I need to get that wire through this door, feed it into the reversing light of the van. I'm sorry, the reversing light's down here. So at least when the reverse light comes on, the camera switch on. And then we've got to feed the wire all the way down the van to the monitor, which will be at the front. Right, so first of all, I've got to take off that light cluster so we can feed a wire up. And obviously this one, so we can get in behind the reversing light. We've got to plug this in to the camera, like so. Now, because these bits are hidden behind the door card here, I'm gonna tape them all together so they don't rattle apart. Right, power lead goes into there. Phono lead, is it called? We'll get plugged into there. I'm not gonna tape these ones up just yet. I will do in a bit, because I wanna make sure that I can get them fed through the door and down to the lights. The power, and that will go to the reversing light. Thank you. 
Right, so what I'm going to do... So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole through this uh, gland just all, should I say, that just here. Drill through a hole. I'm going to get the wires to come through here because that is about the only place. In fact, no. Do you know what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to drill a separate hole so it's got its own hole to come through a, 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 a grommet. So I think that would be the best bet for this. Um, I might go above it, actually. Just above... We put a grommet in there, get the wires going through, makes it watertight, and also then we can tape the wires to this um, conduit. Right, as you can see, I've now fed the wire through here, and we've got a little grommet this side here. See that grommet up here? Sorry, where are we? Completely lost myself now. No, sorry. All right, as you can see, put a grommet in and fed the wires down, and they are cable tied and attached to this conduit. We've taken all the lights out now, and what I need to do is get a wire fed down through here from inside at the top, and that's how we can attach it to this. So, our easiest way would be feed a wire down through that void. It's going to be quite difficult because there is quite a lot of um, insulation there. So this is gonna be fun. Right. And we had fun yesterday trying to get it down through the door. So this is gonna be about the same. But this is gonna take quite a time to get this wire down through there. I'm not gonna bore you to tears with watching me feed a cable through this void. So what I'll do is I'll get the cable down, fed down through, tape the other end and pull it back through. The wire goes through there, which was behind the light, and then it goes up through there, and it comes out on the inside just there. So now what we've got to do is feed it all the way down that roof line to the front. So I need to put the light back on there. This positive and negative wire is going to come down and attach to the reversing light just here. Right, so now these cables are through and full fed up through there. And they're literally all tucked up through the roof lining. And if you look down the front there, you can see the black wire hanging down. That is on that connects to the monitor. Now what I've got to do over here is I've got to put this light back on here. So this one here is the power lead and that's going to go down behind this light cluster here and connect onto this, these two wires here which is the reversing light. Now black is your earth, white is your live. So I'm literally going to cut those wires and I'm going to solder this all in and heat shrink it. And then once I've done that, I'll come back and show you. Right, so there you go. I have now attached the wires to the reversing light. So fingers across their work. <laughs> I've now got to go and wire up the monitor at the front. So I'm going to try. I'm going to literally wire it up first before I do any more, and then start putting things back together. So I say the wire feeds up through there behind that plastic there comes out the side there, goes up there, there, and it goes behind the door. Right, so I've been pulling the wiring out from under the passenger side dash here, because the fuse box is just there, behind the cup holder. So I pulled this wiring loom down because this one is the one that leads to the back. And I have discovered that this white wire here is the reversing light circuit. So I'm going to tap into that and that is going to switch on the screen while the reversing light at the back will switch on the camera. This white wire here, as you can see I've cut and stripped back, that is actually the reversing circuit wire for the van. So again, I've tapped into that for the screen. 
Um, I'm gonna find some way to earth or to um, ground out the uh, the negative. And in the chassis there, there's one just beyond there, there's a nut there. So I'm gonna put it onto there. With the live wire, I've attached an inline fuse and that's gonna be soldered onto those two there. So then the fuse can be changed quite easily. Right, when you get these cameras, as much as I have to say this, the sticky pads that come on the back of these are what I would call useless, to say the least. So we always scrape these off and replace them. And I replace it with this stuff. It's a high strength, double-sided foam tape. Now the reason I leave that off like that is so I can actually peel it off, because once, if I was to cut it across there, trying to pick that off is a nightmare. Right, so. What we do is stick it on there. Just peel it off a little bit. Up there. You know what it's going to be like next time to get it off? A nightmare. Right, so stick that on there nice and tight. And then we trim around the edges.
Right, that's that. What I'm going to do is go and get a cloth and some alcohol to wipe where we're going to put it on the screen. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. That's dirty. Yeah, I'll give you another idea. See, there is dirt up there. So don't think from one minute, if the screen looks clean, it's not always. So all I've got to do now is to wire the yellow one. You've got two, if you notice, there's two inputs on this. The yellow one is predominantly for the rear view camera and the white one is the second V. So if you've got one for inside the van or if you've got one facing the front and the power, again, to ensure they don't come apart when they're up, they're up apart in the roof. As some people out there, some someone's going to be thinking, I don't need to do this, but at the end of the day, there's no reason for not to do it. It's not hurting anybody, and it, to me, it makes it that less chance. It gives it that less chance of coming apart. Let me show you the reverse camera working. First, we've got to do is turn the ignition on. If you notice, it's not working at the moment. And there you go. So take it out of reverse. Now put it back in again. And there it is, your reversing camera. So even if I turn the ignition off, the camera goes off. So it won't drain the battery while your key's not in the ignition. Right, okay, so another job I have to do for this customer. His name's Dan, by the way. We say Dan, not customer. Another job we've got to do for Dan is fit this 12 volt USB and cigarette lighter socket so what happens is each one of them will go in there but before we do that we need to sort of place out on the wall here where it's going to go so let me turn you around Right, so basically it's going to go about there, about, I say about there, give it a little bit of a space above. So what I need to do is draw, draw two holes here and here, and then get the hole saw out and chop a hole in it, two holes.
survive one more time. Right, so there you go. That is the USB socket and the 12 volt socket. Ooh. Fits in place. I need to wire it in the back. Right, I know I'm using gold screws because I have no little black ones. And the black ones that come with it, and they're too long. So I'm gonna advise the customer to replace these with some smaller black screws. Or if he wishes to use the screws that come with it, he can replace them with that. But I just didn't want to put them right through the wood. Because the cupboard behind is in use all the time. Right, I would show you behind here. But there's not a lot of space and not a lot of place to put the camera in. So, it's basically wiring it positive, positive, negative, negative. It's already got its um, fuse in line. So we don't even need to fuse that. Um, there's the fuse. So I'll let Dan know that. And then once that's finished, we can clean up the van and hand it back to Dan. Hopefully he'll be a very happy man as well. But I think literally that's all I've got time for on this van. So what have we done? We've installed a two kilowatt heater and we've tapped in a T-piece underneath into the fuel return line. Now it's so easy to do on these vans and it's a lot easier to do uh, than a lot of others because you have to drop the tank out of a lot of vans. So yeah, tapping into the fuel return line is a good way to get fuel in and out of these. So we've done that. We've also installed the side step because um, we had to cut away a lot of the floor to get that to sit in place. We've screwed that down. We fitted in the USB sockets and also the reversing camera. I know it's quite dark in here, but there you go. If I switch it on, you should be able to see that power up. There you go. And switch it off, switch it on. Right, okay, so that's it for another day at the workshop with me and Dan's van. Um, so let's just recap. We've done the heater, we have done the side step, we have done a USB socket and cigarette lighter socket, and we've also done the reversing camera. So all in all, a good day. A good two days, actually. It wasn't one day, it was two days. Um, busy one. Now we, need to now we need to deliver the vehicle back to Dan. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'd just like to wish you all a very happy new year. And I hope it's been a great start for everybody. Um, it's been a very tough year the year before. But you know what? That's the past. You can't change that. You can't control the uncontrollables. So try and control what happens this year for yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you're staying safe, I hope you're staying well, and most of all, as always, I say it all the time, staying very, very happy. And it's bye for now.